Now we are at the Brno Technological Center of the company FEI, where top electron microscopes are developed and produced. Most of us don't know much about this scientific field. Yet, Brno is one of the biggest centers of the development and production of electron microscopes in the world. Without electron microscopes, there would be no smartphones, no modern materials such as Kevlar, Moira, and no modern medicine. The use of these devices influences even the price of crude oil. The price of these devices can reach tens of millions of Czech crowns. Wow, these are quite expensive machines. Who buys them? The main customers of FEI devices include renowned universities, scientific teams, big pharmaceutical companies, and the research and development centers of the space, semiconductor, mining, car, and aircraft industries. FEI Brno is the biggest producer of electron microscopes in the world. Just the production space would cover two football fields. How does such a microscope work? The optical microscope has been known since the 17th century. The modern optical microscope has magnification of about 10,000 times and makes it possible for the human eye to distinguish objects that are two ten thousandths of a millimeter away from each other. It is this resolving power of the microscope, i.e. the ability to distinguish two very close objects in an image, which is one of the most important parameters. The level of magnification just makes it possible to picture how the image was enlarged. However, it does not say whether we can see anything in the picture. A human eye, at its best, has only a resolution of 0.2 millimeters, while the optical microscope has two ten thousandths of a millimeter and the electron microscope has up to 50 picometers. Wait a minute, that's too many numbers. Well, it's as if you were watching a tennis match from the moon and were still able to follow the small tennis ball. Mmm, interesting. Let's go back to the optical microscope. When attempting to reach a better resolution, scientists encountered the limit of the wavelength of the light used for the illumination of the sample. It was not possible to distinguish points closer than several hundreds of nanometers. In 1920, it was discovered that accelerated electrons in a vacuum can act as light, while the wavelength of these electrons is about 100,000 times smaller than light. It was also discovered that electric and magnetic fields influence electrons similarly to how lenses and mirrors influence the light. Hey, who is this handsome fellow? That's Dr. Ernst Ruska, who assembled the first electron microscope in 1931, and after more than 50 years, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics for his invention. Well, the main thing is that he lived to receive it. I am still waiting. I would still like to know what an electron actually is. An electron is the negatively charged particle of an atom orbiting around the nucleus. It can be released by heat or an electric field. Electrons are 2,000 times lighter than the smallest atom. Thus, they can easily be stopped or diverted when hitting materials. Now I see. That's why there must be a vacuum in the microscope. Great! The column of the electron microscope consists of basically the same parts as the optical one. However, the source of light is replaced by the so-called electron guns and the glass lenses by electromagnetic ones. The electron beam is produced by an electron gun, in which, for example, a tungsten filament can be placed as the electron source. The beam is produced by heating the filament up to 2,700 degrees Celsius and connecting it to high voltage. The higher the voltage, the higher the energy of the electrons. The electrons accelerated by 300 kilovolts almost reach the speed of light. However, to reach a high resolution, the accelerating voltage and series of lenses must be immensely stable. The power cabinet contains a number of sources whose output voltage or current fluctuate not more than one millionth of the output value. I probably understand, but don't you have another example? The one with tennis was excellent. I do. 
Try to imagine that the allowed voltage fluctuation in a common socket has the height of Mount Everest. Then, the allowed voltage fluctuation of a 200 kilovolt high voltage source has the height of only 7 centimeters. Such stability needs very efficient and sophisticated electronic circuits. You see how good you are with examples? Let's go on. Since electrons move freely only in a vacuum, there must be a vacuum in the entire column. To achieve this, vacuum pumps are used. Various levels of vacuum are needed. The highest is around the electron gun. The difference between common air pressure and residual pressure in the microscope is about 10 orders of magnitude. So it means that the probability that an electron will hit an air molecule under this pressure when passing through the column is zero? Yes, almost zero. However, dozens of millions to billions of electrons hit the samples per second. Poor lizard. Electromagnetic lenses focus the electron beam on the examined sample in an optimal way. During its entire journey, the electron beam goes through a number of apertures with various diameters. The smallest ones can be just a few thousandths of a millimeter. These apertures stop electrons undesirable for creating the image. The electron beam hits the observed object and it either scans its surface step by step as if it were reading an inscription on the wall with a torch at night, or it goes through the sample and shows its inner structure. I see. And according to the way the electron beam hits the sample, we distinguish two basic types of electron microscopes, scanning and transmission. Exactly. The sample for the transmission electron microscope is very thin, several hundred nanometers, and it is placed on a grid. If it wasn't thin, electrons would be stopped and no image would be created in the transmission microscope. There are various holders available for the examination of samples in the transmission microscope, depending on the application a customer would like to use. Here we can see a holder where more samples can be placed at the same time. On the other hand, the sample examined in the scanning microscope can be bigger, even dozens of centimeters. Therefore, the scanning microscope is always used where information about the surface of the sample is required. Yes, the only requirement is that the sample must withstand a vacuum and the irradiation with electrons. A holder is not necessary. Samples are placed in a small table, which is placed under the electron column. As soon as the electron beam hits the sample or scans through it, various detectors placed in the microscope create the final image. And can I manipulate the sample placed this way in the microscope? You are right that it is not enough to move most of the examined objects along a horizontal axis. Information can be gained from various depths of the sample and we can observe them if we slightly turn the sample. The sample holder in the transmission microscope is inserted through a vacuum interlock in the goniometer. This enables not only movement along the X and Y axes, but also its inclination around one or both axes. Also, the rotation or movement along the Z axis in parallel to the electron beam. Phew, that sentence is a little complicated. It would be enough to say, yes, it's possible. We'd better move on. What influences the quality of the picture? The image quality in the scanning microscope depends on the orientation and distance of the sample from detectors and the final lens. The stage on which the sample is placed makes it possible to move it vertically along the X and Y axes, up and down in the direction of the Z axis, and with a possible inclination and rotation. These movements are performed with step motors and are controlled by the computer. Great, but show me some pictures already. Biologists use electron microscopes to examine the structure of cells, bacteria, viruses, and colloidal particles. Scientists who are concerned with material characteristics want to observe inhomogeneities and faults in metals, crystals, and ceramic materials. In geological fields, the electron microscope allowed the detailed studies of rocks, minerals, and fossils, and to understand the origin of our planet and its valuable mineral resources. Modern electron microscopes not only display, but also analyze, measure, and modify in 2D, 3D, and even 4D. 
Wait, I know it here. This is SATEC in Brno, Central European Institute of Technology. Yes, there is a cryos electron microscope here with a special function. It can work with biological samples. They would soon be dehydrated by the vacuum in the common electron microscope and thus would be destroyed for the research. However, FEI has developed a system where each sample is permanently frozen to at least the temperature of liquid nitrogen from its production to its examination in the cryos microscope. I understand. Thus, the damage is prevented. Díky transmisním elektronovému mikroskopu Titan Cryos, vybavenému přímým detektorem elektronů Falcon 2, dokážeme v naší laboratoři určovat struktury virů, případně proteinových komplexů s velmi vysokým rozlišením. Získání struktur s velmi vysokým rozlišením je pro naší práci velmi důležité, protože nám umožňuje objasnit například mechanizmy infekce v případě virů nebo mechanizmy akce jednotlivých proteinových komplexů účastnících se důležitých biologických pochodů uvnitř buňky. Nesmírnou výhodou mikroskopu Kryos je jeho extrémní stabilita, která nám umožňuje provádět dlouhodobá měření a také možnost měřit v plně automatickém režimu, tedy bez přítomnosti obsluhy. Díky tomu můžeme naměřit kvalitnější data během kratšího času a tak efektivně využít měřící čas přístroje což ve svém důsledku snižuje naše náklady na získání jedné struktury. What is at the very beginning of a new electron microscope? At the beginning of every technological innovation, there is always cooperation with scientists and customers from a vast range of industrial fields. This is naturally joined with FEI's enthusiasm and desire to make products that expand the limits of the possible. To reach such device properties that provide customers with new information, whether they are concerned with the structure of new materials, cellular organelles, or semiconductor elements, it is necessary to fulfill a lot of conditions at the same time. If even one of these is neglected, it can destroy the whole effort. V případě, že se nám trošku změní v laboratoři teplota, všechny materiály, z kterých je elektronový mikroskop postaven, mají tendenci měnit své rozměry a dochází k tomu, že elektronová sonda a samotný zkoumaný vzorek se nám vzájemně začnou posouvat. Druhý takový fakt je existence zvuku. Všechny materiály se pod akustickým tlakem mírně deformují. V běžném životě to nevadí, ale v, v případě elektronové mikroskopie to vadí, protože nám to zase způsobuje vzájemný pohyb jednotlivých částí mikroskopu. Další výzva, s kterou se musíme potýkat při konstrukci mikroskopu, je takzvaná kontaminace. Elektronový paprsek má takovou vlastnost, že polymerizuje uhlovodíky které se nachází v blízkosti vzorku. Tyto uhlovodíky se kolem nás vyskutují ve velmi malých koncentracích. My je běžně nevnímáme a nevadí, ale v případě elektronového mikroskopu i velmi malá koncentrace uhlovodíků způsobí, že pod elektronovým paprskem narůstají na vzorku velmi tenké několik atomových vrstev tlusté vrstvy polymeru, které nám zase zhoršují vlastnosti mikroskopu. If I understand it correctly, after checking the theoretical calculation of a new idea, the designers must model the whole future device with the help of computer programs. Exactly. Physical calculations can encounter the limits of reality, material properties, production technology, and production feasibility. Z přírody známe spoustu technických řešení, která zatím bohužel neumíme v plné míře a ve stejné kvalitě vyrobit. Jako příklad si můžeme vzít kloup hmyzu, kde je téměř dokonalé ozubené soukolí, které bychom potřebovali do našeho mikroskopu, ale zatím ho dokážeme vyrobit pouze několika násobně větší. Well, Mother Nature is still ahead of us. The functionality of a construction program used by development engineers makes it possible to find out immediately all the size parameters, possible collisions, and various system configurations. The modules that make it possible to simulate the power load and stress of individual parts or influence of the temperature field are also used. 
Nejde jenom o součástky samotné, které tvoří mikroskop. Jde o to v mikroskopu v celém přístroji vytvořit dostatek prostoru pro umístění řídících jednotek, zároveň rozmístit a propojit všechny spolukomunikující jednotky, natahat desítky až stovky metrů kabelů a zároveň celý mikroskop kvalitně zakrytovat, protože krytování není jenom to, co zákazník vidí, ale je to nedílná součást mikroskopu, která pomáhá k výsledné kvalitě finálního obrazu. Functional covers are used to prevent various interferences in these highly sensitive devices. FEI makes sure the devices are unique not only in their abilities, but also in their design. Designers convert the models of all the parts into drawings, according to which the parts are then made. They then compose the functional prototype of the new device. Are all the parts made by FEI? A part of the prototypes are produced directly in the FEI machinery workshop. Various materials are machined there, from construction steel and special non-magnetic materials to aluminum and titanium alloys and technical plastics, whose properties in certain parameters are better than that of metals. The size of samples and the precision of the machining range is to a hundredth or even a thousandth of a millimeter and comply with the precision of the final system. These are incredibly tiny parts. I would like to see such a small lathe. You are right. Some of the parts are so small that they cannot be machined and prototypes are produced by different technologies. For example, etching into material. Well, that makes sense. When the mechanical part of a new device is finished, assembly and long-term reliability tests start. It is the time to engage other members of the development team to implement electronics and bring the microscope to life with software. Every electron microscope needs several dozen electronic boards for it to properly work. Wait a minute, let me guess. Very precise voltage will be needed again. So these are not just common boards. You are right, as usual. A very precise voltage source is needed for the electron beam. Very precise current and voltage sources are necessary for electron beam deflection and shaping. And special low noise amplifiers of very low currents are needed to amplify signals created by backscattered or secondary electrons. So we get back to the drawings of detailed electrical diagrams. Precisely. And only after that, the boards of printed circuits are designed and the parts are soldered onto them. And here's the result. Sorry, but this really looks like an ordinary board that I have in the back of my computer. No, no. With regard to specific requirements of the microscope, its design is at the cutting edge of feasibility. Requirements for precision, time and temperature stability of current and voltage sources are usually stated in PPM. The stability of these sources in the microscope is required to be within 1 to 10 PPM. In other words, it must not change more than between 100 thousandth and 1 millionth of the setup value over a specific time and temperature range. This makes my head spin. We call it the SDSB. SDSB? Sure. Sweet damn stable board. I see. Uh, we'd better go on. Each board must be tested, first usually as a separate board on the developer's table. If everything is all right, then comes the crucial moment. Only when tested with a microscope will it be proved whether all the requirements are fulfilled. The need for better and more complicated electron optical technology brings about the requirement for easier operation. Pro řízení, sledování a záznam provozních podmínek dnešních moderních elektronových mikroskopů používáme výkonné počítače. Takto například vypadá řídící panel moderního rastrovacího mikroskopu. Individual regulating modules control subsystems in the microscope and take care of their proper function, safety, and mutual integration. The power units of the computer are placed outside the device so that electromagnetic interference does not influence and disrupt the provided image. 
Když se podíváme na starší mikroskopy a na dnešní moderní prozařovací mikroskopy, je zde ještě patrný menší počet ovládacích prvků. A je to dáno tím, že spoustu řízení je zastoupeno výkonnými počítači, které obsluhují samotný mikroskop. Nespornou výhodou těchto ovládacích prvků také je, že jsou zapojeny do sítě. Operátor tedy může sedět i ve vedlejší místnosti, kde může diskutovat se svými spolupracovníky, aniž by jakým způsob, jakýmkoliv způsobem rušil obraz mikroskopu. Může také sedět i tisíce mil daleko. Apart from controlling the computer and its operation, the software has another important function, communication with the user through the user interface. The image obtained with the detectors in the microscope chamber is projected on the screen. So is it possible to watch the sample in different ways, depending on the microscope setup? Yes, and it is the software which makes it possible to find the optimal conditions for a particular purpose. And not only that, a customer can use applications that speed up and facilitate work, both in research and development and in industry. For example, 3D reconstruction, analysis of structure, composition, and form. As I see it, the microscope is kind of a big jigsaw puzzle, where all the bits must precisely fit in. That's why a new microscope is tested for thousands of hours before all its properties and parameters are fully checked. So here we have a technologically innovative device, but how to build it repeatedly, say 20 times in a row? That's the job of product engineers. They are a kind of bridge between developers and standardized production. I see. They must tune up prototypes designed by developers so that they are suitable for serial production. Precisely, and that's not a joke. The microscope consists of many parts, thousands or even tens of thousands of parts in one device. The logistics department usually orders about 8,000 items from 400 suppliers for the production in Brno. Some items are so special that their delivery takes up to 200 days. FEI in Brno must plan and buy material for more than 50 production models. Therefore, precision is necessary even in this case. No part must cause a delay. 99% of material delivered to the warehouse is sorted to the shelves on the same day to be available for production. Production workers must be trained and work instructions must be prepared for them. Well, that's how it is in every company. Sure, but let me give you an example. If we printed out all the instructions for one microscope on common office paper, we would get a pile equal to several thick books and we have included only one specific set of accessories for one customer in the calculation. I admit, this is not quite assembly line production. In this respect, the electron microscope can be compared to a luxury watch. It is actually very precise manual work. How long does it take to make these Swiss watches? The production of the entire system takes from three weeks to five months, depending on its complexity. Because of the dust-free environment, the production is termed clean. 10,000 dust particles per cubic foot is only a fraction compared to several millions of particles in the same volume of common environment. The clean rooms are entered through so-called filters, a white coat, shoes or shoe covers, and a cap preventing falling out hair and dead cells from contaminating the environment. Further measures include tape that is changed several times a day and is used whenever the clean rooms are entered. The area is cleaned quite often, isn't it? It is actually being cleaned constantly. It is not allowed to bring in any objects that could contaminate the area. Employees are allowed to drink only still water, and even paper used for printing is special dust-free. Well, there must be order, but dust-free paper? 
However, dust-free space is not the only monitored factor. FEI microscopes are made in an extremely monitored environment. To be able to make such precise devices, FEI measures and adjusts a lot of other parameters. Noise, vibrations, electromagnetic fields, the air temperature, the temperature of treated cooling water, the airflow, humidity, etc. Wait a minute, is that an entire floor of cooling pipes? Yes, it is. The cooling system of this factory would be sufficient to cool four ice hockey arenas. The air conditioning system can filter more than a million cubic meters per hour. Therefore, no wonder that an entire floor in this building is reserved for it. The material from the warehouse enters FEI productions through here. Not a single speck of dust can get inside. I know. One particle of dust could devalue the entire microscope. Maybe not the entire microscope, but certainly one of the parts. And when you consider that the price of one part is often tens of thousands of dollars, you suddenly realize that the value of the material on the cart in front of you is that of several new cars. I see. Therefore, each part is checked before entering the production, especially to see whether there are any scratches and surface defects. Even a scratch thinner than a human hair can result in a situation where the required vacuum in the microscope cannot be maintained, and the electron beam does not have a free path to the sample. Although suppliers provide materials which have already been cleaned, to be on the safe side, the most sensitive material is cleaned by ultrasound, chemical, or manual treatment in the first grade cleaning line. To reach a working vacuum in the most complex devices, it is necessary to heat the parts to a high temperature for several hours while gases dissolved in the material are drawn out and pumped down at the same time. There are only 1,000 dust particles per cubic foot in the assembly area, where parts that are extremely sensitive to clean environment are produced. Is that why the employees must wear masks and gloves? Yes, all the time. It is necessary in super clean areas. Critical operations include the mechanical setting and centering of individual parts of the optical system with a precision of thousandths of millimeters. Here they work literally in kid gloves. Precisely. Every thumbprint would devalue the material worth by tens of thousands of check crowns. To ensure perfect tightness, the device is tested in various phases of work by a special mass analyzer set to detect helium. Helium is blown upon the system from the outside, and since it does not commonly occur in the environment, it is easily detected. If the detector does not discover the presence of helium in the system, they know in FEI that the part is perfectly tight and they can move to another phase of production. A specialized team of mechanics assembles the final form of the product from the components and performs basic activation. That consists of connecting up the separate electronic sets and starting up the system. The prepared product is taken to the workplace where the so-called finalization is performed. A functional setup, tests, and configuration according to the customer's order. Na přání zákazníka můžeme na mikroskopy namontovat různé příslušenství, detektory, manipulátory, elektroniku, ale i software. FEI nabízí až 500 možných rozšířitelných položek. Tím pádem je každý náš mikroskop originál. First, the finalization specialist interconnects all the electronic boards with the server where they install the microscope software. The testing sample is inserted into the microscope. During the microscope setup and testing, several standardized samples are used, including tin balls on carbon, a silicon chip, TEM grid, platinum target, gold grains on carbon, and so on. Tyhle preparáty používáme kvůli svým přesně známým rozměrům, které nám umožňují přesně kalibrovat naše mikroskopy. 
A dá se s nimi užít i srandy. Wow, the sample is smiling at us. To ensure that hydrocarbons are not caught on the sample from the residual atmosphere in the microscope, so-called contamination, the environment of the sample is cooled down by liquid nitrogen to a temperature of negative 196 degrees Celsius with a specially designed cryopump. The nitrogen binds residual gases in the same way as water vapor on a frozen railing. I know, liquid nitrogen. Hasta la vista, baby. Yeah, I see. Uh, we'd better go on. While the device setup and its preparation is being finalized in FEI, according to the customer's wishes, even the customer must get ready for the microscope. A laboratory equipped with the electron microscope is expected to have stable water cooling, compressed air for valve control, gaseous and liquid nitrogen. So it looks as if the customer was building an entire special building for his new microscope. It's not uncommon, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. The microscope has not been finished yet. Each device has its own birth certificate, a so-called final test, where the entire process of the setup is described in individual instructions, step by step. Every day, the finalization specialist consults them, records the finished steps, and keeps a record of the parameters measured. The final test evaluates them from the point of view of the quality of the final product. I když vypadá jako placka, jsou na něm vypálené jasně definované body, o kterých jsou v tvrví, kde jsou. A při pohybu pod svazkem si dokáže změřit odchylku a tuhle odchylku kompenzovat. This scanning microscope can be used not only for imaging samples. It is equipped with dual beams. It can even mill or sputter some samples with a focused ion beam. The ion column is almost always connected with other applications that the customer orders. This is an application testing for the preparation of lamella for further observation in a transmission microscope. Its thickness and overall quality is being tested. The testing program again helps with the evaluation. The microscope must be continuously cooled down because the magnetic coils which focus the passing electron beam are warmed up by the strong electric current running through them. Let me guess, without cooling, they would be destroyed. That's why the temperature of the cooling water is maintained with regards to standards of local production with a maximum deviation of a tenth of a degree Celsius in half an hour. Without this stability, it would be impossible to achieve a stable image in high resolution. Maximum care is devoted to even the smallest detail. For example, the placement of cables, which is not accidental. Cables are placed so as not to create interfering electromagnetic fields anywhere and not to affect each other. After the successful completion of all the procedures, an experienced acceptance engineer checks all the key functions and measured values. An acceptance engineer? That's a nice job. I would like to do that someday. Acceptance engineer. Acceptance is an important milestone in the production of the microscope. Not a single value can be outside the limit. Everything must work flawlessly. Well, how is it with our microscope? Is everything okay? Yes, our microscope was very successful. The measured values are summarized in the report, which travels with the microscope to the customer. Then the computer is backed up, reports are printed, the basic parts of the microscope are disconnected, and the microscope is taken to the packing room. Kvalita výroby je pro FEI velmi důležitý parametr. Naši zákazníci očekávají perfektní výrobek, který bude dodaný včas, bude dodaný kompletně, bude včas nainstalován a pak bude dlouhá léta spolehlivě fungovat. Z tohoto pohledu výroba může to naplnění tohoto očekávání významně ovlivnit. Proto máme ve výrobě několika úrovňový systém řízení kvality, kdy Každý proces výrobní měříme, vyhodnocujeme a následně verifikujeme, tak abychom tu výstupní kvalitu maximalizovali. Na přístrojích řady TALOS vyhodnocujeme 300 různých kroků s 500 různými parametry. Ty parametry jsou z různých oblastí, tak abychom zajistili maximální kvalitu 
Mezi jinými můžu zmínit oblast váku a obča, oblast optiky, oblast bezpečnosti samozřejmě. FEI does not meticulously take care of only the optical and physical features of the final product, but also of its appearance. There mustn't be any scratches or smudges. Customers must see at first sight that they are getting a top quality product for their laboratory. All the parts of the microscope are approached with extraordinary care, literally in kid gloves, even in the local packing room. Carrier companies cooperating with FEI must comply with strict conditions enabling them to transport shipments under the terms of AEO certification. What does the AEO certification mean, please? This certification is granted after a thorough verification of the producer and guarantees his safety and reliability within international trade. Thanks to the certification, microscopes undergo fewer customs checks on the way to the customer, which speeds up the transport. FEI delivers microscopes to the whole world. The microscope is not delivered to the customer on its own. It is accompanied by an FEI service engineer who ensures the proper connection and installation of the device. Installation of the device takes from two to eight weeks, depending on its complexity. Such a microscope is quite a giant, I tell you. Especially transmission microscopes are not dwarfs at all. They are up to four meters high, and sometimes construction changes of the particular building are necessary. Service engineers provide support to customers all around the world. More experienced engineers in the Technical Assistance Center are permanently available to help their colleagues in the field. Although the production of one system takes months, FEI is able to make up to 800 of them per year in Brno. FEI microscopes help scientists make discoveries worth the Nobel Prizes. Daniel Schechtman, who received the Nobel Prize for the discovery of quasicrystals that are used in the production of surgical steel, works with just such an electron microscope from FEI. Now I see it's not easy at all to make such a microscope. <laughs>